What's going on guys? My name is Joey Franzo here with Flex Training Systems. How are you guys doing? Uh, getting this video up a little bit later than usual just because we had Memorial Day and then I had a lot of work to catch up on and yesterday I was at different doctors all day. Um, in this video I'm just going to talk a little bit about me uh, give you guys some updates on what's going on with me and maybe some interesting things that you didn't know. And towards the end, I'll leave you guys with some keys. As I know, uh, many of you guys tune in for some tips and we want to keep that going. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Many of you guys know uh, that I've been dieting for a little while. Um, I was 253. The morning, I think it was 254, 253, the morning of the Arnold, when I woke up, and uh, this last week, uh, the scale has shown me at 234 uh, on four different occasions, I'm doing a kind of like a non-linear dieting approach, so, my, you know, after those high days, I'm going to fluctuate, but, uh, which actually for some people can be frustrating, they just have that relationship with the scale. They see that number go up and they start to freak out. But I know that it's part of the plan. It's nothing to be afraid of. Uh, it is just simply, uh, you know, a result of the higher food, uh, specifically higher carbs that I had for, uh, you know, I don't really do it for one day. I'll have, uh, you know, one day of like a higher carb day than another day where it's like, kind of what I estimate my maintenance to be around, um, just so the body can kind of not feel freaked out, and then I get right back to it for the next five days. Uh, for those of you that are interested in my what my macros are, I'm going to post this on my uh, Instagram story, but uh, I'm just running with 60 fat, uh, somewhere between 340 to 300 carb. And then somewhere between 200 to 240 protein. Uh, but the calories do not ever go over 2,700 unless I'm intentionally doing a refeed. Um, and yeah, I just ride that out. Uh, my current training split, I was going to make an entire video just on this. But since we're already on the topic, I'll just go ahead and uh, share it with you guys. And tell you some of the things I like about it. Um, starting out the week with a uh, low bar competition squat. Uh, pause bench with close grip and then the next day uh, is so each each I'm doing one big compound lift per day uh, but after bench I'm doing like some sort of accessory um, so it goes low bar pause bench close grip and then high bar like literally just high bar and then the next day is uh, pause bench and some sort of incline whether it's an incline bench or an incline dumbbell press um, and if my pecs are destroyed I'm gonna do shoulders uh, and then the next day is deadlift, and I just do deadlifts. I might do some rows, but I just focus on getting my deads in. Next day, after that final day, is bench, and then we take a day off, and then we hit it for six days straight. I like this schedule because it allows me to really concentrate on um, low bar on one day, and then the other day, so at the end of the week, I can uh, focus on deadlifts, and I'm not too destroyed going into that session. High bar doesn't really tax me that much. Um, so I can have those two days to kind of push. And then I have that middle day because, you know, uh, I if I wanted to optimize my squat, I might move that middle day away from my first day and add in another low bar session. Um, but this way I can, especially because I'm dieting, I know my squat's going to take a hit. I would rather try to bring up my deadlift uh, while... You know, I'm still building my squat. We're still squatting twice a week, but um, I'm not prioritizing as hard as I used to in the past where uh, deadlifts would literally just be the last thing. Um, I think squats are, in my opinion, the most important lift in the meet. I mean, uh, it depends on the individual, but if your momentum is good after squat, you're going to carry that into bench. You're going to carry that into deadlift. And... Um, it can set the tone for the entire meet. It's kind of like in a football game, uh, you know, kickoff is very important. Uh, it sets the tone for that first half, that first quarter. Um, 
So you always want to start whatever it is you're doing on a good note and then just continue that uh, momentum. So another reason why I really like this split is because it allows me to like kind of be consistent. Like I'm training six days a week, so there's never really a day where, uh, you know, like you might have a couple low days or, or a couple of down days where you're not training. And you're maybe not losing weight that day or, or you're not really feeling that deficit. I just like uh, the structure of the six days. And when I compete, that is the split that I like to use, except I would move that deadlift day uh, to the middle. Um, and I move the second squat day farther away. Um, but that's the way I like to do it. Um, I really like going in. You hit one lift, maybe some accessories, and get out. Versus, uh, you know, doing like squats and bench together. If you're a smaller lifter, it doesn't really matter. If you're a bigger lifter, uh, it's a lot of stress on the body. You know, you're lifting like tons and tons of weight, like literally tons, uh, over a period of time. And it can wear down on you, especially like my upper mid-back. You know, arching on bench and then squatting, your back's going to get just, it's just you're mangling, you're smashing your back from all angles. Um, so that's the split that I really like. Um, I don't. I think I have a couple guys doing something similar, but uh, most people, you know, they don't have the. I'd say it's about fifty-fifty. They don't have the freedom to just, you know, have that ideal schedule. Um, and some people might need more. Some people might have to have those three bench days, and then you're benching. You the bench five days a week. So you're benching every day or six days a week, whatever. Just depends. Uh, also, for those of you who care, I got my testosterone checked uh, 16 months ago, and just recently, um, and I was like 250 plus pounds six months ago, uh, and currently right now, um, like I said, 234 seems to be, you know, continue. I've hit it multiple times. We will see when I check again, but... Um, my my total testosterone was 900 and my uh my free was like i think like 120 or 145 and my total went down to 746 i believe and my my total went down to uh the smaller number went down to 125 uh what does that mean um well it means my testosterone went down but i feel great I matched an all-time bench PR uh, literally yesterday uh, at Zoo Culture. For those of you that haven't been, if you're in Southern California or in the Valley, literally, literally my hood where I'm from, you guys see me at Barbell Brigade, but that's actually a little bit of a drive for me. I live uh, in the Valley, kind of um, in between Pierce and Valley College. Uh, so uh, it's a good location for me. They also have competition, weights, plates, benches, everything you need. Uh, went over there, hit uh, four or five for four out of nine, felt good. But you know, my numbers did go down. My testosterone did go down. I think it's just a product of dieting. It's just uh, something that happens when you diet, and uh, you know, I feel ten times better, and I can't wait to see how I feel in another ten pounds. We might take a break before we shave off those ten. Uh, it's probably going to be, you know, more like 14 once I bring food back in, but um, it doesn't really mean much. I just thought I might get it checked. Uh, I was also feeling kind of sick, and I said, why not knock out two birds with one stone? Um, get my get get a blood test, make sure I'm healthy. I'm actually very healthy. Everything's good to go. So that is good to hear. Um, and uh, I'm going to, if some of you guys know, I did a DEXA scan not too long ago. Uh, so I'm going to do that again. Uh, soon and we'll find out uh, kind of where I'm at and if my uh, lean body mass like how much my lean body mass went down that's what I'm really interested in um, so yeah that's kind of what's going on with me training is starting to pick up uh, oh yeah I forgot um, this might be you know for some of you guys that are dealing with like chronic soft tissue injury like maybe you have a torn meniscus or maybe you have a you know hip labrum that's funky or, or really bad tendonitis in the knee or something. I got PRP on my knee a while back and I, that completely healed me and then I competed at the Arnold twice since then and my knee is still good to go. 
so I had such a good result. I went back to see my doctor, and we're going to do it again on my hip this time. There's literally no drawback other than it's expensive. Uh, but, you know, if, imagine imagine getting more more years on your life, more or, or more years in your training life, or, or being able to do something that you love a little bit longer. Um, even if it gave me another eight months, uh, another year, you know, or something, uh, or if it could relieve the discomfort that I'm having by 30% even, uh, that would mean a lot to me. Uh, I know it's probably never going to be 100% just because the way my hips are formed. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I did live with a mixed grip, so it can kind of, um, I have a very long torso, right? And when you did live with a mixed grip, short arms, long torso, the there is more opportunity for movement in your torso than in your arms obviously your arms are two they're two they're bones right they're they're mostly just bone there's no they can only move one way uh like your elbow can only bend like a certain way right but your back can move left right up down all around it can it can move all over the place so what's happening is over time over the years and years of me just pulling mixed grip heavy 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 um, it's actually not that heavy, <laughs> honestly, as you guys know, my deadlift is not, you can have a good amount of muscle on your back and have a weak deadlift with a long torso. Uh, I got that round back deadlift, so I got to comp, my body's compensating for the mixed grip somehow, uh, and I started to develop a little bit of scoliosis off to the right, and then my hips are shifting to the left to kind of keep everything center. So I've been working with the chiropractor, um, and I talked to my orthopedic uh, doctor about this, and basically they want me to pull with straps. <laughs> they want me to do double overhand and do straps. I've tried hook grip. I have the biggest palms and these and the tiniest fingers, like really tiny fingers, but gigantic palms. So it just doesn't work for me. But mixed grip is fine, and I just do like my top set mixed, uh, and then I go back to using straps for whatever else. Um, that way, you know, I'm I'm lessening it. I'm not making it as worse. Um, and, uh, there's my, my Cairo says that my hips are already starting to look better, but we'll see. I know it's going to take some time. Just something interesting. If you guys didn't know, um, and I know this video was a lot about me, but, uh, there are some things that I'm doing that I think can help a lot of people out there. Um, and, uh, yeah, uh, I just wanted to say really quickly before I go, I wanted to touch on, uh, changing things up just to change it up. Uh, this is going to be like a summary of a bigger video, but basically, um, if you, if you're interested in being competitive, like highly competitive and you have, uh, like goals and things like that, uh, then just changing things up just to change it up. It might give you like, you know, uh, it might be like fun for the time being or something, but if you're not actively like moving towards that goal and you want to win, like you can't say I want to win nationals, but I don't want to, I want to, I don't want to do what it takes to get there. Uh, if you're not doing it, somebody else is, and somebody else is like I know I fucking know these people because I work with them, and I've and I've some of them compete against my guys. They don't care about what is fun. They just do what it takes to win. They they you know they dial in on a goal. They're like you know what for these many years of my life I'm gonna fucking be the best of this thing I can be, and that's what they do. And if that's what you want to do, that's fine. If you don't want to do that, that's fine too. But the the issue is when people. Um, you know, you have people kind of saying they want to do something, but then they, they don't, they really don't. Um, uh, one quick example, and then I'm out. Uh, it's like, you know, my buddy Bradley opened up his new gym and you have all these new people in there and uh, a lot of people kind of want to be a part of the hype. And they attention, they get caught up in the social media, but when they see what it takes to actually be strong, when they see what it takes to come in every day and put in the hard work and train and do all this stuff, they really don't, they're not about it. They just say that they want to do it. So you need to find out what it is that you want to do. Uh, there is no right or wrong way uh, to to be whatever it is you want to be. You just have to find out, that, find out what you're willing to do to do that. And if you're not willing to do it, then don't do it. And don't waste you know other people's time by saying you want to be X, Y, Z. Um, but clearly, clearly you're not willing to, uh, do that and that's okay. That is not, it's not a bad thing. It's just, um, I think some people see the end result or they see, you know, the, they see the, the wide receiver in the end zone celebrating, 
but they don't realize everything he had to do to get to that point to become that all star. So, alrighty, guys, little quick key there at the end. 15 minutes. We're gonna cut it here. I just wanted to talk to you guys because uh, I hadn't in a little while. Um, uh, if you guys like these periodical updates with me with the small keys at the end, then uh, go ahead and let me know in the comments down below. Drop a like, and yeah, I will talk to you in the next one.